Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and today I have for you this fun summary koi set. It was my attempt at doing a 3D embedded look. I used some water decals so I show you how to apply water decals and I also show you the bubble method. So you can see on the pointer and the pinky finger that I have embedded little real bubbles into the gel and I will show you how to do that in this video. What really inspired this was Odine Nails, I believe that's how you pronounce it, but this is a small business, I believe it's run by one person. She had seen one of my YouTube videos and actually reached out to me over Instagram. She just said, hey, you know, I love your videos, I'd love to send you some decals. So I talked with her a little bit, told her which ones I liked and I am somebody who likes supporting other small businesses so I actually placed an order for some of the decals and she just included some freebies with that so here is everything that I received she has tons of fun designs on her website I will make sure to link that down below but they're really nice high quality decals like the images are super clear I don't know exactly how she gets all of the art. I do know that she has some collaborations with people, so I think that she either commissions the art or um, finds art that she can use, but I do know that I have not seen a lot of these specific patterns before. I have seen these styles, but a lot of the actual decals themselves um, are very unique to other things that I have seen online, or they're at least more detailed. You can really see that here when you get up close that they have tons of good detail to them they are slightly textured so you can see the surface is a little bit rough i don't know if that's just the printing process but even the butterflies their patterns are all very much apparent i love this set here the set i actually purchased myself so this is one that i picked out for an upcoming kind of like moss apothecary set that I have in mind. I love the little mushrooms. And I got these ones here. Also a set that I ordered for doing like that milk bath look. I just thought these flowers looked super realistic. A lot of these patterns are not cartoony looking. They're very much more either stylistically meant to look like paints or they are meant to look very realistic, which I do enjoy in a decal. You know, sometimes you're in the mood for something a little bit more cartoony, but generally I find that I can paint more of a cartoonish design pretty well. It's when you get into these types of images that have a ton of really small details where you're trying to get it to look realistic that I find decals, at least for me personally, are the most helpful. I loved those little figs for some reason. They were just so precious. The set is one that she sent to me and it's one that I didn't even know I wanted, but it is gorgeous. And this is the set that we will be using today. So just a big shout out to, I believe it's Leia from Odine Nails. Thank you so much for sending these to me. I'm super excited to use them. So I'm going to pair it today with my tiny gel. This is number 20, I believe, the blue from the Sunset Collection. I just thought it would fit really well with the decals, so I am going in and prepping my nails. I did finally get the Apre primer. I tend to etch my nails with primer rather than sanding them down just because I think personally for me it's easier, it doesn't create as much of a mess, and I'm loving this brush. It's nice and stubby so that you can really scrub in the product right into the tip. You just want to scrub this on until it all dries and it feels tacky to the touch with the brush. You'll notice that it gets a little bit textured and that's just to help the gel hold on to the nail tip. Now if you don't have primer, you definitely can just sand on your nails, use like a buffing block or like a 180 grit file, but I personally again just find this easier because it's less of a mess for me. I don't have to worry about dust or cleaning off the nails. Just a quick safety reminder, please please make sure that you are avoiding contact with uncured gel as much as possible. By wearing gloves, I recommend nitrile and read up on the products that you are using so that you know if there are any other safety concerns you should be looking out for. So now that my tips are all prepped, I'm going in with the Zombie Base Gel. This product is new to me. It was sent to me from Sweetie Nail Supply. 
for PR. Thank you so much, by the way, to everybody who ordered from my last video. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll link it above. But I do go through and swatch a bunch of products that I purchased from Sweetie Nail Supply. But they have reached out to me. I do have a discount code now. It is Get Pressed. You can use that for 10% off. And I also earn commission. So it is a way to get yourself your nail products, but support me at the same time. And I just want to say a huge, huge shout out. Thank you so much to everybody who did go ahead and purchase with my discount code. I was honestly a little bit worried. I know I like a thousand, don't get me wrong. The number of subscribers I have right now is nothing to scoff at. I am super grateful to all of you who are with me, but in the grand scheme of things, I, I'm a smaller channel, you know? And so I was just so stunned when Sweetie Null Supply reached out to me about doing some PR. And so when I put that code up, I was a little bit worried, I'll be honest, about nobody using it and it like kind of looking um not bad on my part but i wanted to make sure that my first partnership with them was successful so i really do appreciate for the people who had ordered um i you know it, it means a lot to me i hope you really enjoy your products i really really do love and stand by sweetie nail supply as a supplier i love korean japanese gel products i'm always super excited to try out new ones so I do the hauls, I do the reviews, and hopes that anybody else looking to purchase products finds some information before they do so, because I know that they're more expensive. Don't get me wrong, Korean gels for me are a splurge, they are a way of treating myself, and I do so much research before I buy a full collection, I'm looking at swatch videos, I'm trying to find info online, so I just hope that whenever I do reviews and things like that, that it does help some of you who are also looking to get the same products. So yeah, I'd love it if you were somebody who ordered, if you wanna leave in the comments down below what you got, that way I can be excited for you and maybe live vicariously through your orders. So yeah, um, let me know your favorite Korean gel products and if you order down below in the comments. But anyway, after that whole tangent there, um, I am just going in after base coating the nails and applying that blue gel. I decide to do three full blue nails and two ombre nails. Now, the base gel, I really do like. It is the Yogo Zombie Base Gel. It is very thick though, so if you're somebody who likes a thinner base gel, not the one for you. I actually prefer more of a thick one because I tend to use nail tips that are a little bit more on the flexible side for some designs because if I know I'm going to be adding a lot of art to the top of it, I don't want the nails to get too, too thick. And these nails, they're going to be thick, okay? Whenever you do the bubble effect, just by nature, it's going to be thick. So I'm using some thinner nail tips here and I like a thicker base gel for when I'm using a thinner nail tip just to add that extra layer of strength, just to make sure that they are nice and sturdy for whoever I might be making the nails for. These ones are just for me, so um, they're not going anywhere special, but I still wanted to try out the base gel. And now I'm using that same base gel actually to help me with my ombre. This is the square gradient brush that I actually showed off in my last review of the Korean nail products. This is also from Mayo, or I guess it's, it's from Yogo, which is I believe like the parent company of Mayo. And I'm trying this new ombre method that I've seen, which is where you take your color, you put it on the end, you leave it uncured, and then you take a brush, like a gradient brush or a square brush like this, and you load it up with some base gel, and then you just kind of like float that base gel towards the color and try to blend the two together. And I ended up really liking this technique. I think I need to work on it just a little bit. But I was finding, especially for an ombre like this, where I'm going from clear to a color, it gave a really nice smooth finish without having to use, say, an airbrush, which you can't really, really do with like a, um, a syrup gel like this, just because it's not going to have the color payoff that you're probably looking for with such a thin coat. It's also really difficult to do an ombre with the sponge technique with a color like this because again, it's just too thin of a color. It's not going to give you that color payoff without a 
bunch of layers. So really brushing on the ombre is gonna be your best option. So yeah, I'm liking this technique. I definitely need to work on it a little bit. I do think it is better with a thinner base coat. Like I said, that Yogo base coat is quite thick, which I like for structure, but in this instance, I think I will be using in the future a thinner base coat specifically for that gradient method. Sorry if I sound weird in this video, by the way. Um, I somehow got pretty sick. Um, I. I don't know if it's allergies or what. Um, I talked about it a little bit before, but my 30th birthday was this past Sunday. So I had spent the weekend doing things, going outside. My sister and I went to Disney World on Friday and that was a lot of fun, but I do think I was exposed to quite a bit of pollen. And so it gave me some congestion and that ended up, you know, irritating my throat. So I do apologize if I sound a little bit frog-like um, in some places in this video. I really wanted to get this out for you, but that does mean that I might sound a little, a little off. Um, I appreciate you all for watching anyway. So now that I'm 30, um, it doesn't really feel any different, I'll be honest. And I spent my 30th birthday doing probably the least like 30s thing that you could do. My boyfriend, He's very sweet. He found a gotcha place in the mall that's near where we live. I am located in Orlando and a gotcha is a Japanese style claw machine arcade, I guess is the best way you can put it. It's just filled with all of these different claw machines where you can go and buy tokens and just spend some time there trying to win prizes. Um, we went and we spent probably way too much money but uh, we were on a fairly bad losing streak until the last set of tokens that we bought and we ended up getting three different stuffed animals, my favorite of which and the last one that we got on our second to last turn on the machine was a giant Sleepy Kirby. If you've seen some of my previous nail art, you know that I love Kirby. He was one of the first games that I played on a Nintendo DS. I had Kirby in Dreamland. And so that was really fun. Um, it did make me feel like a kid again, you know, going to the arcade, spending your parents' money, although this time it was my <laughs> lovely boyfriend's for my birthday. Um, it was just, it was a lot of fun. It made me feel young again. And I am definitely looking forward to my 30s. You know, I love my career as a teacher. I'm super happy I started this meal channel. I've loved so much getting to talk to all of you in the comments and whatnot and share kind of the things that I've learned and my passion for this hobby. So I just, I really appreciate you all for being here. I hope you know that. And I'm having a lot of fun with this. So here's to another decade and happy birthday to anybody else who has a June birthday or a summer birthday. So now I'm going to go in with my crazy top thick and a small carrying lamp. This is going to be for that bubble technique. You also need a syringe. Now I bought this single use syringe off of Timu. They're really cheap. Um, it was only a couple dollars I think for a pack of five, but I strongly recommend getting one of these if you want to try this bubble technique. You can do it other ways. I just personally find this the easiest. You want to start with a very, very thick layer of gel. Really any product that you have that is a, a thicker consistency will work. You just want to make sure that it's not going to self-level too much and run all over the place. So I find this top coat pretty easy to use. It's that Jinbi thick top coat, my favorite for 3D designs, and it helps that it's also non-wipe, but Maybe like a builder gel would probably work. Any sort of thicker viscosity gel is going to be good for this. And you just want to put on a nice generous layer on top and smooth that out as best as you can. You do want the surface pretty even, pretty smooth because that's going to be your overall shape. Once you put the bubbles in, there is very little filing that you can actually do over the top of the nail just because you don't want to file into those bubbles that you've created. So you want to make sure that you have a nicer shape. That's why I'm turning the nail over here, letting that gel pool towards the center, towards the apex, 
You can also use your little brush to shape it while it's turned over. And then this I probably didn't need to do. I actually think I used too much gel on these bubble nails. I think I could have gotten away with that layer that I had laid down before, but I was being cautious. I wanted enough room in there to actually add the bubbles and make them visible. So I added more gel, smoothed it out, made sure that everything was nice and leveled. Holding that upside down really helps create like a natural apex. And then you're going to take your little flashy lab and you're flash curing this, okay? I would say no more than like maybe 10 seconds over the surface. This is two times the speed. So as you can see here, you just want that top layer to be cured. If I poke it, it's still liquid underneath and that's what you actually need. So I attempt to poke a hole here in the top. I ended up poking a hole in the side. So I just went with it. I stuck the little syringe in there, started blowing some bubbles, some air, but I decided I didn't really want to go from the side. So I reseal it and then I flash cure just the bottom of the nail to really get those sides sealed. And then I attempt to go in from the top. That wasn't working with the syringe, so I just took an even sharper plastic implement. This is like a, a plastic cuticle pusher, and I pop a little hole in the top there. The side came unsealed, so I had to go in and flash cure the bottom. I would strongly recommend starting there is by flash curing the bottom. Just get those sides nice and enclosed. Then you can go through the top, poke your hole in, insert your syringe, and just add some air bubbles. Now, some of the gel is going to come out of the top. That's fine. You're displacing the gel with the air. You can just wipe that away. I would recommend wiping it away as best as you can before curing. That way, again, the surface of the nail isn't super uneven. Once you have it at this stage, um, you can play around more. You can wiggle the needle around. That can kind of help create some bubbles. Um, but just, just play around with it to your liking. You don't want to put too much air in there because you you want the bubbles to stay separate if you put too much air you're gonna get like one big air pocket which i think was my mistake on this nail i think i i messed with it too much i should have stopped while i was ahead earlier but that's okay um a lot of nail art for me i guess is about experimenting and finding what works best so here i'm just repeating that process on the pinky finger Add that thick layer of gel and then flash cure. This time I'm curing the bottom first, so I'm making sure those sides are nice and sealed in. And then I'm going in to check that it's cured enough on the edges. It was good. So I take that little cuticle pusher and I poke a hole right in the middle. Don't worry about being too, too gentle with this. If you've cured the edges well enough, they should not move. And then I'm going in with that same syringe and just adding some air bubbles. Now when you're doing this, make sure that when you pull the plunger back from the syringe, that you're not doing that in the gel, otherwise you're gonna suck some of it up into the needle. Make sure that you're keeping it clean. So I do wipe off the needle sometimes in between when I insert it to add more air, just to make sure that I'm not getting too much uncured gel up in the needle so that I can reuse it in the future. This is the same style of syringe that I actually use for my aquarium nails too. So I use this for oil to fill in those aqua nails. Now before curing, you can actually kind of like move the bubbles around a little bit from the surface. You just push them around a little bit, get them to where you like them, and then give it a full cure. I think the pinky finger came out a lot better than the pointer, but that's okay. Um, here are the two together. And now to move on to the water decals. So you need a pair of scissors. You need your decals, you need a little thing of water, and you want to start by cutting these decals out. The instructions say as close as possible to the design. I didn't quite realize that with these decals, the um, clear covering is attached. I guess that makes sense. It's usually how decals work. So I did not cut quite as closely as I should have on that first one. I do learn this lesson later, but if you're going to be using these ones specifically, definitely try to cut it as close as possible to the design to avoid too much of that extra clear backing from being part of your decal. 
So I picked out the ones that I liked for this set here. Work one at a time, float them in the water, and I use a stamper head. So this is just a silicone stamper for nail stamping. And I find that this application method is super easy. You just dry off the top a little bit if you need to, place it on the rubber stamper, and then slide the back off. It comes off super easy. And then the plus side to this is once you dry off the back and you're ready to place the image, you can flip over the stamper and see exactly where you're placing it. That way you're not trying to have to do like guesswork on where the design is going. So here I'm just flattening it out. You can rub it in after you place the design down. Now that one there, I realized that I had left too much extra space around the design. So I go in for the next decals and I cut a little bit closer to the design this time. That way you just don't have the um, extra clear portion that caused some wrinkling on the thumbnail, but that's okay. My favorite saying, you live and you learn. Here's round two, just drawing off the surface with a little bit of paper towel, and then I am placing it on the stamper and just sliding that back right off. It is so, so easy to do it this way. These decals also seem to separate from the backing paper super easily. I've had some before that will stick even if you soak them in water for like a full minute. So that was really nice. I'm applying it to the nail and just smoothing out any sort of wrinkles that might have come up. Here I am also realizing that you can actually wipe away some of that clear part with just rubbing alcohol. So if you have too much on the edge, if it is wrinkling, at least with these stamps, at least with these water decals, you can just wipe away some of that extra clear with a tissue or some sort of lint-free wipe and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Now I had a genius idea to kind of zhuzh up your water decals to make them 3D. I don't know if I love how it turned out, I think it looks so much better in person. Unfortunately, on video, it doesn't show up as well as I would have liked. But my thought was, I'm gonna turn these 3D. So I take just some thick, clear 3D gel. I use my favorite crazy non-white top coat and I lay it over the koi fish bodies. So I am trying to get kind of like a bubble effect here, build the structure of the body. So my thought was I would paint over this in the same color, the same design as what was underneath, and that way it would look like a little 3D fish swimming in the water. Again, this is something that you can really see in person. I actually love the way that these turned out in person, but unfortunately over video, it's a little bit hard to tell or even see the 3D effect, so I'm not as pleased with how it looks um, here on camera, but I do think in person it turned out fairly nice. This is a super extra process though, so if you just want to leave your decals as is, totally an option. Um, I think these decals look amazing on their own, but I like to experiment a little bit with my nail art, so I thought this was something I would just try out. And yeah, overall, um, I think I have learned some things. And I do want to try this technique again in the future, but I wish that you guys could see how these ones turned out in person. They just look so much better. But yeah. It also gave me an excuse to use my degel paints. I got them in my last haul from Sweetie Nail Supply, and I have been itching to use them ever since. So here these are. They are the degel and Ginny collaboration set. They just come with all of your basic colors, that way you can mix them together and get your own custom colors if needed. But I open them up here and they have this really nice silicone cover. This is like a second layer of protection to keep these paints from drying out or anything like that because it creates this really nice sealed environment for them to sit in. They are very thick. So you can see here when I put them on my Diami liner brush that they definitely hold their shape. They're not self-leveling. They are truly thick paints and they're meant to be this way.
because they are meant for doing nail art where you really only want to put down one coat you don't want to have to go back in with multiple coats of a color so yeah i was a huge fan of how these are stored um as you can see here i'm testing out loading my brush when you are painting you want to make sure that you really load the brush up the first time so that the paint really saturates all of the bristles you want the brush to not look like this i show you here what it looks like when you get like a thick dollop on the end if that happens just run the brush over a surface until you get a nice thin layer of paint on that bristle you want the pointed end of the brush to remain a point so here i am just going over with a base coat of white I'm covering up that 3D body that I made in order to lay down the other colors on top. Now potentially you could actually do this on the surface of the nail. So you could put your art in the layers beneath the sticker, the decal, and then you could add just that clear 3D gel on top. I think that would actually look really cool. Um, I had wanted this to look like these fish were submerged in the water though, so I'm painting over the surface of that clear gel because if you were to just put that bubble of clear gel over the koi fish and then try to top coat it or something, the top coat's going to blend in instantly with that clear gel that you laid down and you're not going to see any sort of 3D effect at all. So. I'm covering it with a paint in hopes that it will look 3D once I top coat everything. And I'm just adding some extra little details here to the tail and to the little fins. All of it very unnecessary, um, but I was just I was having fun experimenting and I really wanted to use these painting gels to the fullest and kind of see how they performed. I really like them. As you can see here, I only really need one coat to cover up that little water decal. I've spoken before about the Venalisa mud gels. Those were my first gel paints. They were a, a budget option for me. And I still think they're great for people who are beginning and who don't have a ton of cash to drop on, you know, a set like this from Sweetie Nail Supply. But these ones, they went on so much smoother. They were so much more pigmented. I will give them that. I really, truly only needed one coat. The Venalisa ones are a little bit more sheer, and actually sometimes I kind of like that. I like being able to paint a design and having a little bit of the background peek through, almost as if it were like a, a watercolor situation. But if you're looking for some really nice opaque gel paints, these degel paints are amazing. They're very good for doing these small details. Overall, I would definitely recommend. Now, one thing that I think I want to try in the future with this sort of design is actually adding some chrome on top, some iridescent chrome. I think especially for fish scales, that would look amazing if you did a little bit of like 3D chrome work over the top. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about stickers and decals. I know there are some artists, some nail artists who they don't necessarily look down on stickers or decals, but they prefer to hand paint things, which I think is amazing. I try to hand paint a lot of my details because I enjoy the process of doing so. I enjoy the process of painting, but I know there are some people who are either just getting started with painting and don't really feel as confident in their skills, or maybe they physically can't. Some people, you know, have conditions that give them shaky hands. And so I think decals, stickers are a great way of getting a lot of extra detail for when you don't have either the time or the ability to hand paint everything. And honestly, I think using them this way is a really good option for people who are wanting to start with hand painting and maybe need like a template to work with to help them get started. So like with this, I placed them down because I really liked the design of them. And then I painted the same design over, which allowed me to practice my painting skills. But I also had something to work off of in terms of a design and a general outline. And I didn't have to start all from scratch. So I love the idea 
of taking these tools that we're given, things that are kind of a time saver, like a sticker or a decal, and messing around and experimenting with ways that you can make them a little bit more your own. So yeah, next up, I definitely want to try like using a decal and adding some sort of 3D chrome over it. I think that would be an awesome option, awesome option as well. So yeah, I see stickers, decals as a great alternative to hand painting. Um, I think they're an awesome time saver. And even if you're just, you know, you're feeling a little bit lazy that day, you don't want to put the time into hand painting everything. I totally understand. You know, we are all busy. We've all got things to do. Not everybody can sit down and spend five hours hand painting details on nails. So I totally think that stickers are a great tool, but let me know, where are you on that argument? So now that I have all my painting done, I do think I made the eyes a little bit big. That's another thing. I will next time for sure go in with smaller dots, but I am just overlaying all of these details with my Izemi. This is not a non-wipe, this is a wipe top coat. I'm testing this out because I had read somewhere or heard that it wasn't super yellowing. Because these details, a lot of them are white, I wanted a top coat that wasn't going to give it that yellow cast. And I actually do think it went pretty well this time. I'd used it before and it caused some yellowing, but for some reason on these ones, it seemed fine. So I'm going to keep using it. Um, here I'm just filing down the edges of those bubble nails because they did get a little thick, I'll be honest. And I decided I wanted to go in with some little like water streaks to emulate kind of like the look of flowing water. So I paint on some blooming gel. This is just the Beatles blooming gel. And then I'm using the Hema Free Born Pretty Milky White to add just some little streaks in that blooming gel. It spreads nicely and looks like flowing water. I do overlap some of the sticker with that white design because I want the fish specifically to look like they are underneath the water surface. So that was the whole kind of goal with the set was to make them look like they were floating in water, they were embedded. So I make sure to actually paint over some of it, like the tail here, with that white gel so that it looks like it's underneath that layer. In hindsight, I think I might have used a more opaque white for these details just to provide a little bit more contrast, but overall I do think it turned out fairly nice. After curing all the nails, I go in with just some more of that milky white but without the blooming gel this time just to add a little bit more definition to those swirls. Again, I think next time I would use a more opaque white. This is definitely a more subtle look, but I wanted something just a little bit more apparent, more contrasting, so I go in with the straight polish instead of using that blooming gel to add more definition. And I know this video is crazy long already, but something in my head said, I didn't want to rest with just that one bubble technique on the pinky and pointer nail, so I went in and I did another bubble technique. I don't really think it needed it, I think I could have left it without this, but sometimes I go a little bit overboard on my designs, I have these big ideas, and I try to pull in too much, but that's okay, I think overall they end up looking nice. So I'm laying down that milky white just along the edges of the nail and I'm taking some soap bubbles and before curing that white polish, I am laying the soap bubbles over the polish and then I'm giving it a good flash cure. You want to make sure to do this before any of those bubbles pop, that way you get that texture and it comes out looking a bit like sea foam, I suppose. And I'm doing that on both the pinky and the pointer finger. A little bit unnecessary, I definitely think, when seeing the final results, but that's okay. A lot of this is about experimenting. Same process, lay those bubbles, and then give it a flash cure before doing a full cure in your nail lamp. 
And last but not least, but it wouldn't be a water set without some pearls. So I pull out my pearls here and my trusty McCart rhinestone glue. Love this stuff, love the tip applicator. And I'm just placing some little pearls on the three fingers with the koi fish, just because I wanted a little bit of extra white in there. If you don't already have one of these gem trays, I would strongly recommend getting them. They're meant for the diamond painting sets, but they turn all of your gems or your pearls, any sort of flat backed rhinestones, right side up, so they're really easy to pick up. I just ordered mine off of Timu. I will try to link it below because it has made this process so, so much easier for me. It works, again, on any sort of like flat backed decoration, flat backed rhinestone. It's especially helpful for those really super small ones that are hard to flip over. I know this is a super long video. My throat is definitely feeling it. Um, trying to record this while it's irritated has been a challenge, lots of takes, but if you are still here, um, thank you so much for watching. Maybe let's leave like a little fish emoji down in the comments below um, so that I can see who made it all the way to the end. And now I am just top coating with one of my new favorites, this is the D-Gel non-scratch, non-wipe top coat. It is a thicker consistency, but I like that because it just evens out your nails so nicely. If you do have any texture to them, I think the finish is really lovely. It's super shiny. I haven't really been able to test how well it keeps your nails from getting scratched because I haven't used it for that long, but so far um, it seems to be really strong and lasting a long time. Now I'm just filing down the sides again of those bubble nails. I'm actually taking off some of the bulk from where I added that seafoam effect to, giving them one last top coat. These nails, like I said, they're quite thick. So if you do this design with the bubbles, expect to have thicker nails because you just need that space in between to add the, the air bubbles. And finally, last but not least, I am taking that crazy thick top coat and I wanted to create kind of like a ripple effect for one of the nails to show that the koi fish is coming to the surface. So. I start by just doing little circular lines around the head of that koi fish. I don't do full circles all the way around, you definitely could, but I wanted to keep it a little bit irregular looking, so I'm doing almost like half circles and staggering where they are so that they fully surround the fish and I'm trying to make them slightly thinner the further away from the fish that I go. And I love how this effect turned out. I think it looks so realistic, so much like a little koi fish is peeking its head out of the water. And I just thought it was like a nice finishing touch. So here are the final nails. I also went in and did something entirely unnecessary, which is adding some water droplets on the ring and pinky finger. Definitely would leave that off next time. I don't think it needed it at all. But here I'm trying to show you the 3D nature of these nails and how the fish really do look like they are submerged in water. Again, it's not showing up super well on camera. Unfortunately, in real life, you can really see the effect. On camera, it's looking a little bit flattened out, but that's okay. I ended up really liking the way that these turned out. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you try this sort of method of making your stickers look 3D? How do you all like using water decals? Thank you so much again to everybody who has been watching my videos, supporting my channel, um, ordering from Sweetie Nail Supply. If you would like to order yourself, again, that code is GETPRESSED. It's also going to be linked below, but thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.